Hey, what's up everybody? Back here with another episode of The Morning Routine. And as always, I got my co-host Austin. And as usual, we don't know what where Carl's at. I think Austin said you saw him where? I think I saw him at a 7-Eleven. Ah, there you go. Man, I don't know what's going on with that guy. Anyway. Yeah. I heard he went to Turkey to get a, a hair transplant. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, I'm kidding. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, we march forward regardless. And yeah. as always, we have headlines, you guys. BBD, headlines. We are coming straight from Washington. That's right. And the first one is self-driving taxis are hitting the road. Hi, that I'm Johnny Cab. <laughs> Ooh, Johnny Cab. God, that was a great idea for a self-driving uh, cab company. But yeah, you heard it correctly. It's a cab. It's self-driving. That means it drives itself. So all you got to do is get in the car and it takes you to your destination. As a matter of fact, here's a little video clip to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Check it out. Now to the new mode of transportation that could be coming to a city near you. Self-driving taxis are already on the road in San Francisco. Our Becky Worley went for a ride. And Becky, I'm going to say, I've been in some crazy drivers, with some crazy drivers in New York City, Texas. I might take my chances with the driverless taxi service of the city. She's here to tell how it went for her. Good morning, Becky. You have a point, Lindsay. Uh, fully self-driving taxi service is happening, and folks like you are excited about that if you were in San Francisco. The public Public Utility Commission has allowed two companies, Google's Waymo and General Motors Cruise, to legally transport riders in limited areas. Both companies let us try them in what some are calling robo-taxis. Riding with no driver, though, was a real trip. Passengers in the back, nobody in the front. I try Waymo and Cruise, the two newly street-legal robo-taxi services in San Francisco. Waymo is first. Ordering one is just like using a rideshare app. In my destination, and wait. A car appears without a human anywhere inside. The car navigates the parking lot, a tricky intersection. Proceeding on Marina Boulevard. And then that motorcycle just cut right in front of us and they handled it pretty well. Our trip is relatively uneventful. Hey, you're here. Now the cruise app. Request ride. Okay. Things start without incident. Then we come to a busy intersection, and as we turn, a man steps into the street, seemingly without looking. Whoa! It was an abrupt stop and jarring for me as a rider. But when we talk to crews, they say their cameras were tracking the man the whole time, that he was never in front of the car, and the car acted as it's programmed to, veering left to keep a safe distance from the pedestrian. While the cruise car successfully navigated that situation, there have been safety issues with cars from both companies. Trucks, ambulances, and then police cars and all that. And most recently, there was a cruise car that got stuck in the wet cement on the road. And San Francisco has asked crews to reduce the number of its cars on the streets as they work on the technology. And the rest of my cruise trip is fine. Speed of the car in the neighborhood seems really appropriate. No California stops, a full and complete stop every time. Turn signals, always going on. Almost there. We've arrived. I made it. Both companies focused on safety. Waymo telling ABC News safety is our mission and top priority as we develop and deploy this technology. And cruise ads were proud of our safety record, which encompasses more than 4 million driverless miles in complex urban environments. And Christine Crosby, who's been a rider in Waymo's pilot program, well, She's a fan. The first ride that I took, I definitely did on my own without a kid when there was no driver in there. You took your kids in this thing? I take my kids in this thing all the time. Christine's done more than 150 rides, many with her six and one-year-olds riding with her. A driverless future that may be their reality very soon. They're currently testing the services around the countries in, in, in cities like L.A., Austin, Phoenix, Miami, Nashville, Atlanta. And there are real pros and cons, guys. I mean, the cons are the loss of employment for taxi drivers and Uber drivers. 
but the pros, it was kind of nice to be in a car by yourself. And as Eddie, our stage manager, just said, you don't have to tip. No <laughs> tips. Were you scared at all, Becky, while you were in the car? The first five minutes, Lindsay, I was like paying attention like I was driving. And then you sort of just get used to it. It's weird. And put on your seatbelt even when you're in the back seat like you did. No matter <laughs> if there is a human driver or, or no right. driver at all. That's what that people can skip out I guess I'd feel better if there was a little button on the back said you could break it at any time. You gotta let go of the control, George. That's what it's all about. Let it go. George, one of the cars had plexiglass, so you couldn't do that. So that was just for you. Yeah. Right, we'll set it up in a That's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah, so there it is. Self-driving taxis. I believe you could go try one in San Francisco. Uh, they're doing it. Um, so yeah. Uh, Check it out. It's yeah, a, just in, input the little code, call it cab. <laughs> yes. Second headline is Panda Express is introducing a new entree dish nationwide. You can get this at any Panda Express. Is it a comfy seat to wait in? No, no, no. Unfortunately not. Whoa. It, <laughs> I know. It is chili crisp shrimp it's a new shrimp dish chili crisp shrimp and it's available september 6th so it came out uh yesterday so but yeah check it out it might be good okay that is our headlines for the day you guys and let's get into our topic and historically as you know on thursdays we talk about independent living skills why because they're very important and it's part of uh, all of our trainings here so here are five five essential independent living skills that every person trying to become more independent should learn and uh, we have trainings here, a program for all of these skills. This is the kind of stuff we like to focus on. It's important to try to be as independent as you can. Even though you live with family, even if you live at a group home where they take good care of your needs, uh, as an adult, there are just certain basic things that you should try your best to learn on your own like using the bathroom by yourself well yeah come on now <laughs> i believe that would fall under our number one skill our number one skill is personal hygiene okay like being able to shower and do your laundry and making sure your nails are trimmed making sure your hair is trimmed making sure you don't got boogers hanging out of your nose and like we talked about earlier, uh, let's just face it. Nobody wants to be around somebody who smells bad. Yeah, no one wants to be around someone that smells like uh, roadkill. Nobody wants to be around somebody who smells like Rock or Bob. <laughs> or looks like Rock or Bob. Come on now. That guy hasn't had a haircut since 1975. Number two. Meal planning and preparation. Again. Uh, I know lots of you guys are lucky enough. You live a family. Uh, you live uh, in group homes where they shop and cook for you and things like that. But again, remember those options may not be available to you in the future. So as much as you can. So take the opportunity, you know, when we do trainings where you go out with staff to go shopping. Don't just hang around. Pay attention. Ask questions. Number three household management things like uh cleaning organizing things like that household management helps keep one's living space clean organized and safe a lot of you guys have talked about uh wanting to live on your own one day well with living on your own comes a set of responsibilities like managing your house number four time management and organization we of course talk about time management a lot 
And in order to become more independent, more, more well-rounded adult, and managing your time is very important. Because if you have all this stuff, all these new responsibilities with, with cooking and meal planning and uh, house management, uh, well, you're gonna need to be better with time management because now you have a lot more to do. All right, last but not least, and this is an important one, budgeting and money management. Let's say you got that job and you're making good money, that's great, but now you have to learn how to manage that money. You gotta learn about credit and debit and banking and saving and things like that. So again, we have trainings on all this stuff, ask questions, because again, you never know when you're going to need these skills. Being independent feels good. And even though it takes more work, and sometimes it's hard, and sometimes it feels like it's never gonna happen, but when you become more independent, the more you become more independent, the less you get told what to do, and the now you're in charge of your life. You get to do what you want with your time, with your money, you get to make a lot of decisions and so the less and less and less you'd be told what to do so if you don't like being told what to do and if you want to take charge of more decisions in your life then become more independent all right let's move on with the program shall we austin what do you think you should do first uh let's well let's go backwards into the past with our man with a beard, Zach Wilde. All right, take it away, Zach. Thursday, hey, it's the 7th. Hey, it's September 7th. Hey, I, uh, I hope you guys have had a great week so far. We're uh, getting closer to the end of the week. Today is the 7th, and uh, we're going to go back, back in the beauty past with Zach. Zach. Today, 1864, in the American Civil War, Army of the Potomac under General Ulysses S. Grant breaks off from the Battle of the Wilderness and moves southward. Okay, so General, uh, General Grant here in 1863 just took care of Vicksburg and uh, basically cut the Confederacy in half. He was promoted, brought back out east. He ends up in the wilderness, his first battle. It's actually one of the few times they've seen, and they've been noted actually, if you look at the diaries, where he, he actually cried after the battle. The battle was a very brutal, horrible battle, um, and for the most part, a stalemate. So what happened after that battle, General Grant decided that he would continue to move south east and continue to move south and east. The whole time he did that, and he did this all the way till he got to Petersburg in 1864, and I'll go into that if you guys ever want me to, but the point is he did that so he could get around the flanks of the Confederacy. The Union had men still rowing boats in the harbor to yell races, okay? The Confederacy, on the other hand, had nobody else to call up into their ranks. So basically what I'm telling you, the Union had an influx of men that could still fill the ranks. So Grant, they called him the butcher, but he knew that he could sustain that many more casualties than Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee could not sustain that amount of casualties and hold up. A, and hold up. So Grant was very aggressive and he used this all the way until essentially they ended up getting uh, General E. Lee to surrender at Appomattox. Also on this day, you had the sinking of the Lusitania. Uh, a lot of individuals, uh, a lot of our history has taught us that this is one of the reasons the Americans uh, declared war on Germany in World War I. Um, the only thing to remember about this is it did happen two years before we did declare war on Germany. So definitely, uh, you know, something you can read and check out a little bit of. Also, too, on this day, we had uh, the Battle of the Coral Sea. 
Um, the Coral Sea, it's an aircraft carrier aircraft attack, and they sink the Imperial Japanese Navy light aircraft carrier Shoho. Now, the battle marks the first time in naval histories that two enemy fights fight without visual contact of each other. So neither one of these navies became visual to each other. They found each other with their air force, with their planes off their, uh, their aircraft carriers, and this naval battle was essentially fought by the airplanes of the Americans over here battling the Japanese fleet, the Japanese battling. The attack eventually went to the Americans and uh, yeah, it was, uh, like I said, it was the first. It's kind of like a, a lot of the war we do now, you know, with our, uh, with our, with our missiles and our shootings like that, you know, um, kind of thousands and, you know, a few miles away, you don't even see what's happening. All kinds of awesome and fun stuff. Uh, Read some history, guys. Uh, there's some good stuff out there. And uh, enjoy. All right, you guys? Enjoy the rest of your Thursday and have a good day, guys. Bye now. All right. Thank you, Zachary, for all those fun historical factoids. Always enjoy those. Uh, Zach's a great guy to talk history with. He is very knowledgeable. So, yeah. Uh, good stuff, Zach. All right. And up next, as always, we have Miss Gabrielle with another national day. Take it away, Gabrielle. Morning everybody, here we are on Thursday. You know what that is, right? We had hump day. Now we're sliding down the slope on to Friday and into the weekend. Today had three national days. Two of them I've done, you know, because days switch and you get a holiday or you get a weekend. So <clears throat> this one was, I haven't done this one. Remarkably after year four almost of this, but I haven't done this one. And this one is National Neither Snow Nor Rain Day. And I kind of piqued my interest. So I looked it up, because what does it sound like to you? Neither rain, snow, whatever. What do you think? Post office. Post office, you're correct. <laughs> and I thought, oh, but it was, it, it, it was established in like 1914. I thought, I think the post office came before 1914. So I looked it up and what it is, is, is the New York post office that was built, which is like a huge hub of the world in New York. And that's the slogan on the outside of it. And it kind of became the slogan for, you know, the postal, you know, neither rain, no snow, no sleet, no whatever. They, hope. they even come on Sundays now. What about zombie apocalypses? Oh, zombie apocalypse. Well, you know. I haven't seen that one chiseled on any buildings yet. 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 But if one were to happen and the postman could still deliver during that time, I'm thinking we might be able to get that one chiseled on a post office. Ooh, we're in a post office, an old post office. Maybe we should chisel that on the outside of our door. Can't historic building. Okay. We get a sign that's removable. There we go, just in case. Because, you know, I do know a fun fact about the Postal Service. Back in the day, you could ship people when they first started. Children. You could ship children. Some people would ship their children. I know it sounds odd, but yes, they would. Uh, for a small fee, it seemed like, you could ship your child somewhere. Um, and then the postal man would take them to that address sounds really weird i think it was in the 1800s but um i wouldn't let my kid walk to the post office right now let alone ship him. <laughs> maybe we should try to ship joe somewhere Ooh. uh the postage on him might be a lot though <laughs> might be a lot joe might be um i don't know if i'm willing to pay that much. i like joe but i don't know if i'm willing to pay that much postage on him because it would be an airmail stamp i'm sure yeah. It'd be too much. But there you have it. 
the national day of neither rain nor snow on the post office in New York. Have a great day. All right, National Day back in the past. I believe those are all of our segments. That's it for today, you guys. Make sure to check us out on YouTube, one o'clock. Today, actually, speaking of independent living, uh, we're going to do our calamity cooking. Uh, you guys are very lucky. Clayton and Gabrielle and Mona uh, and, and other staff. We have tons of staff, but let's face it, those are the, those are the top three. Uh, you know, they know their way around the kitchen. A lot more than I do, okay? You don't want to take your cooking advice from me. But those guys, you know, when they're trying to show you how to make something, pay attention. You'll learn a lot of great stuff. And like we talked about before, cooking is very important. So check out the Calamity Cooking at 1 o'clock YouTube Live today. And we'll see you tomorrow.